Richard the first is one of the first wheel of fortune commanders that you're going to have access to in rise of kingdoms and has been in the game for like five years now. And at the beginning of the game, especially in KVK one, you can perform really well in the open field with Richard as an infantry commander. But how does he actually stack up in the late game in season of conquest with his museum relics and with all the new commanders that come into the game once you reach end game? That's what we're going to talk about today. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Look how shiny my new tankard is. What do you guys think is in this drink? Anyway, Richard is a legendary infantry garrison and defense commander, which is very misleading based on how you're actually going to use him in the late game in rise of kingdoms. But first, let's quickly go over the skills for Richard in case, first of all, you're an old player. You haven't looked at his skills in years, or second of all, maybe you're a brand new player to rise of kingdoms and you want to get a good idea as to what these skills are actually doing. And the most valuable skill on Richard the first is his active skill. If you're going to to do anything with Richard it should be to just max this first skill and what it says is this commander's troop recovers a portion of its slightly wounded units with a healing factor of 1400 and for the next two seconds up to five enemy troops in a fan shape deal 30 percent less damage and lose 15 percent March speed so this is actually a super supportive open field active skill there's zero damage here okay you do no damage with this active skill at all all it does is heal some of your units so that way you have some sustain in the open field okay more of your troops are going to be alive they're going to be fighting and you're going to debuff five enemies by 30 percent all damage which is insane the only exception to that is going to be alexander the great whose second skill says that he's immune to this but besides that you got a nice slowdown and a nice debuff however it's only for two seconds so it's kind of a quantity over quality thing here you're going to debuff a lot of people just briefly the second skill is also pretty nice it says this commander's troop deals 10 percent more counterattack damage which in the early game is a big deal in the late game it's not as much of a big deal and you take 15 percent less damage well that's a big deal all the time 15 percent less damage all the time that's all damage that's really nice this is a very tanky skill counterattack damage means you're going to be dealing more damage to everyone that is hitting you because your counterattacks are going to be hitting them back even if you're not targeting them but they're targeting you the third skill here is generic infantry stats it says 15% attack, 15% defense. This is a little on the low end these days, but it is a nice chunk of stats. The final skill says any healing this commander troop receives is increased by 30%. Okay. That means his active skill is an even stronger healing factor. And you take 30% less damage from watchtowers. Well, watchtowers in the game die almost immediately. This only matters if you're hitting a city and you are never really going to hit a city with Richard. He's a garrison commander. He's not a rally commander. And you're not going to like swarm a city with Richard unless it's going to be the one that's tanking the initial hit maybe but even still watchtowers are dealing like 0.1 percent of the damage you're going to be taking so this second half of the skill is nearly useless like I don't think you'll actually ever notice a difference and finally the expertise says this commander's troop takes five percent less damage that's all damage so now we're up to 20 percent less all damage taken okay that's pretty tanky and infantry units in their troop deal two percent more damage to cavalry that's not that much but it is something and whenever you launch basic attack it reduces the target's march speed by 50 percent for five seconds hang on whenever your troop launches the basic attack whenever it reduces the target's march speed by 50 percent for five seconds now that's a 10 second cooldown which is quite long but all that means is your first hit you just tap them and they get a 50 percent march speed reduction that's a really powerful slowdown that's like quicksand basically which is really cool but again in the late game there's also a lot of other ways to slow down enemies right we have like huo's active skill which is a 50 percent march speed reduction for three seconds of course this is 50 percent for five seconds which is way longer now this is really interesting because that's not what this skill used to say this skill used to say every 10 seconds reduce the target's march speed by 50 percent for five seconds so huge change on the wording here but this is actually accurate the current description is actually how it works if I open up this battle log with a random barbarian on turn one instantly the first basic attack I trigger the expertise on Richard which means the utility on the slowdown on Richard's expertise is actually really unique and really useful in the end game if what you want to do is slow down a target like catch up to them and slow them down so that's actually really good to know now the other thing that's worth noting here is that really the only thing on this kit that cares about infantry is the third skill a little bit of infantry stats here the active skill second skill and third skill and expertise I mean sure the infantry units deal more da damage to calves but like everything else here is 
doesn't care about troop type at all you could actually put richard as a secondary to a cavalry or an archer commander if you wanted to and we'll talk about commander pairings later okay i'm not suggesting that you should do that but there is a little trick that i want to talk about but really like he doesn't care that much about infantry if he is a secondary commander now the other thing we have to go over here besides the skills is his museum he does have a museum buff here and it's kind of useful um you get 15 percent infantry march speed which is actually really nice uh infantry do struggle with march speed a lot so if you do use him with infantry great news he'll be a little bit faster and you get six percent more counterattack damage which again like i said in the end game your counterattack damage isn't gonna be that significant most of your damage is gonna come from single target you know skill shots and massive aoe damage that's mostly where it's going to come from so okay so you get some march speed for infantry which is nice but besides that this isn't that impressive now before we talk about commander pairs and strategy let's also quickly go over the talent build and this is actually the talent build that i have on my richard for sunset canyon which is one of the best uses for richard in rise of kingdoms in the late game and even in the early game honestly he's always good in sunset canyon as a quote-unquote off lane and what i mean by that is the commander pair that you put outside of your main you know square sort of lineup if you put your Richard here with let's say Martell or something then it's going to be super tanky especially with the healing and the shielding and it's going to be constantly pumping out that debuff that Richard has on the active skill and the healing is super good in Sunset Canyon and so if you did use him in Sunset Canyon I would recommend something like this where you actually grab loose formation to take less skill damage you grab medicinal supplies because remember the fourth skill on Richard makes this talent even more powerful you grab testudo formation you grab balance here because you're really not going to be dealing that much damage with Richard anyway right like his damage output is oh it's horrible he's almost a punching bag and so the trade-off here for Canyon in my in my mind is worth it you grab iron spear because there's going to be a lot of cavalry you grab undying fury for the rage you grab the health you grab hold the line and you completely skip all the march speed here because in canyon you do not care about march speed at all and this would be basically the best build that i can think of for canyon now could you argue that you might want to take some points away from somewhere to put them in desperate elegy maybe that is a really nice rage engine under 30 percent i don't know if it really matters that much uh because under 30 percent you're already pretty low and yeah now if i was going to use richard in the open field i would probably do something like this where you actually get all of the march speed here and you also still grab hold the line stronger body you grab the health over here the defense over here you get everything in the beginning of the infantry tree you skip balance uh you could consider that but in the open field you you are attempting to do pvp you don't just want to hold like you do in sunset canyon you grab the first two talents here and then you also grab the six percent march speed in the defense tree you still grab loose formation and you still grab medicinal supplies because again you get the, you get more value out of medicinal supplies with richard than anybody else if you don't like the idea of this then you can kind of skip this whole Part of the tree and you could grab to pseudo formation instead if you find that that is better but i would probably do something like this and truthfully i outside of kvk1 i don't think i would ever use richard in open field pvp anyway but i would say you would do this you have two points left over you throw them in infantry attack here because why not you got nothing else to do and that is that so those are pretty much the two talent builds that i would consider now you might be asking okay he's got the garrison tree how can i use him to protect my city and typically you actually don't want to use richard as a garrison commander pretty much at all especially in your city and the reason for that is because of the healing factor now the healing factor is great in the open field it does keep give you some sustain there but the problem with when you're taking severely wounded units and dead units is that the healing factor will turn your slightly wounded units back into, into fighting capable units and then a portion of those fighting capable units when they take damage will turn severely wounded and dead and so you actually will farm more dead troops with this uh, with Richard as your city garrison with this healing factor than you would do with somebody like Charles Martel for example so this is a quick warning if you're a new player Richard on your city wall is not a good idea even though it looks like it is he looks very tanky you would think that that's good it is not so keep that in mind some players do still use him I think especially in the early game for uh, Ark of Osiris garrison because in that game mode you don't really care about deads so there's that but also like once you get into the end game there are still a lot of really good garrisons that you could use over Richard anyway so Richard as a garrison I feel like his time is kind of past so most of the time you're going to be seeing him in PvP and KvK1 and earlier and you'll be seeing him a lot for PvE content 
for defeating barbarians in the open field and this is a really crucial thing that people use Richard for is they will send Richard out with a commander such as Zhuge Liang or maybe even YSG if you're still rocking it and you basically have this massive circular AoE here you start attacking a barbarian here uh, Richard is very tanky so he will be able to tank these blows and basically the circular AoE of the secondary commander is going to uh, basically pull in the other commander that the other barbarian in the open field so I start attacking here and boom you're gonna see that we're gonna start to fight and I'm close enough to this other barbarian assuming that I pop these skills in time that I will be able to uh basically force him to fight me uh because of that and so I basically get a free attack here with my Richard for this uh for this barbarian so that's called barbarian chaining and that's kind of like the main thing that people use Richard for these days he's very tanky he heals a lot and so you basically can send him out into the world and you could fight a bunch of things without ever having to come back to your city because he's just constantly healing which is honestly pretty useful now there's also a lot of healing in the game these days so commanders like Huo for example have sort of replaced Richard to an extent although if you're running five marches you do want healing on a lot of them and so Richard is a uh is a good choice for barb chaining even still to this day especially because like I said earlier his skills don't really care too much about the troop type and so you could do, put him secondary to something and have a lot of a lot of healing there as well which is very very nice now if you did want to do pvp with him in the early game who would you pair him with well of course the tried and true combination is charles martel charles martel adds a little bit of damage here behind his shield he also gives him a lot more counterattack damage a lot of stats here as well very tanky this is like the early game combo that a lot of people use you could also try something like pyrus if you have him but i think pyrus is probably better paired with a commander possibly like sun tzu who also gives some skill damage bonus which is nice but of course pyrus will give you that uh damage that you desperately need for your richard this is you know this is a pairing that i never got to experience because i was deep into the end game when pyrus actually came out but of course he is a gold key commander so you can pair them together and you also have some march speed here which richard definitely needs in the early game because he doesn't get that relic until season of conquest and of course you also could pair him with somebody that is a bit more supportive in the early game um you could do the sun tzu pairing but sun tzu again i think is more better paired with somebody that does more skill damage he has aoe and stuff like that but you could do the Joan of Arc secondary to Richard. This is definitely a punching bag, unfortunately, but the buff on Joan of Arc is very powerful. It does buff everybody near you. And so if you are a free to play player or a low spender in KVK one, and you have that Richard at five, one, 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 it's a very low investment Well, you could slap behind him an expertise, Joan of Arc. And all of a sudden you are buffing all of your nearby allies with a very substantial buff here and a very substantial debuff on the active skill from Richard. And so your own reports might not be great, but you will be very supportive for everyone around you. And hopefully they will be performing much better because of that. So keep that in mind. Uh, those are some of the better pairings in the early game for Richard, but what can you do with him in the end game? I mentioned earlier that there is a little bit of a trick that you could do, and that would be a Huo primary with Richard secondary. And the benefits or the, the purpose of this March is to just snare your targets. That's basically all you're trying to do. Uh, what you're doing here is with Richard secondary, you're going to, as soon as you start hitting them, like the first tap, you're going to get that 50% slowdown on the expertise for Richard. And then you're going to have a lower rage cost with the Huo primary, which means he's going to pop his active skill on like turn six or something insane like that right and he's going to trigger his 50 percent march speed reduction here as well and so this is only three seconds unfortunately but basically as the richard slowdown is ending you're going to apply another 50 percent slowdown for from huo and then as huo is, is ending then hopefully the cooldown here is nearly over for richard and then you kind of are cycling back and forth between these two 50 percent slowdowns and this is just a super super snaring strategy right and again the purpose of this you're not going to be dealing a, a lot of damage but you are going to be healing your huo a ton and your huo is going to take 20 percent less damage right because five from here 15 from here so huo is going to take 20 percent less damage and he's going to have a ton of heals he's going to reduce the damage of that target by quite a bit especially with the low rage cost on huo you're going to constantly be popping this debuff and also you're going to have six percent more counterattack damage from the relic on richard 
for Huo, which again isn't that very it's not very meaningful in the end game but it is something and then Huo, kind of on his own he does kind of pop off i mean he has a lot of skill damage here he has a lot on his kit to love and of course you would run this with Huo primary as all cavalry i shouldn't have to say that but that would be sort of the strategy that you could do if the only thing you cared about for that army was to just stop a single dude just stop a single target from running away and then the, your other four armies swarm it down and then there you go the other strategy would be to run a Liu Che primary with the horn of fury and you would also run the Richard as the secondary and effectively you would be doing the same thing you'd be slowing them down with the Richard on the first tap the first basic attack and then once your Liu Che pops his active skill boom massive AoE 40% March speed reduction to five targets that's insane and then again you will slow down that first target again once the 10 second cooldown is over for Richard and there's a lot more synergy here than with Huo of course because you get the 30% of stats from Richard you get the 15% March speed for who for Liu Che which is very very good you get the 20% less damage taken for Liu Che there's a lot of synergy here for the infantry the downside is that Liu Che is the only one here that's dealing any amount of damage and Richard is just tanking and healing and slow down a target with that debuff so there's uh you know there's some synergy here it's not going to be the best performing march but again the goal of this march just like with the huo is just a super slowdown you're just constantly slowing down a target so that way you can swarm it down your your allies can swarm it down and really prevent that dude from running away uh really that's kind of the only thing that you can do with richard these days unfortunately in rise of kingdoms in the end game and it's a shame because i feel like we do need more sort of tanks in the game especially at the end game I don't know why they kind of strayed away from tanking in rise of kingdoms in general but we do have two new formation the testudo formation where you take five percent less damage with the shield and 2.5 percent more healing and also the circle formation is literally built for richard five percent more healing i mean it is what it is now these two we haven't seen much use out of these so far i think perhaps testudo is used in maybe some garrisons but really like i think the commanders that these are made for have yet to come out and if that is the case maybe we could see a commander come into the game later down the line that is really good and has good synergy for richard right who knows it is to be seen so maybe maybe richard will have a comeback in the end of 2024 whenever we see like the next infantry cycle if they have healing and shielding who knows maybe richard will uh, be back to his former glory but until then he's mainly going to be used for you know circular aoe barb chaining and also great off lane in sunset and lost canyon and finally he's great for debuffing and slowing the target with either liu che or huo the liu che combo will perform better in a trade perspective but the huo will be much faster in the open field with the cavalry so you can catch up to that target so keep that in mind and with that being said guys that's pretty much everything i want to say about richard um his glory days are pretty much over he's great in the early game not great in the end game but he does still have some uses and so i always recommend a 5-1-1-1 richard uh the expertise is cool for that slowdown but it's really not worth it if you are a low spender or medium spender and really even maybe a whale might not even consider doing this these days but guys with that being said if you enjoyed this video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below your thoughts on richard the first do you think that he deserves a comeback do you think he needs a buff or do you think that he is good as a budget build at 5111 and he's fine there just leave it what do you guys think let me know in the comment section below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace